Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I had an epiphany. No, not the black stripper at the strip club near the airport. I mean, an amazing idea that I think will uh, not save comics, but uh, basically be the future of it. No, uh, no pressure. But before I start, um, I'm watching this. Uh, uh, well, that's a great, oh, that's an amazing panel. It's so exciting. Yeah, it's just like a pylon or something like that. Um, but I'm watching that Snake Eyes uh, movie. Um, I watched the, the Shadow Strays. I put a, a review for it on my other channel. And then I just felt like watching more ninja stuff. And uh, it's on Netflix right now. It's so funny. Like, I don't even remember when this movie came out, like maybe like four years ago. But I remember one of the birthday party clowns. At one point, Storm Shadow calls Snake Eyes Fish Boy because he works in a fish market, essentially. Uh, or he cuts up fish. Um, and, like, they just kept harping on it over and over again. But if you actually just watch the movie, spoiler, uh, Storm Shadow is underco undercover and he's playing, like, a basically, like, a spoiled asshole. So that's why he's messing with him. Like, there's nothing wrong with it um so what i'm trying to say is uh how do i say this you can't trust the birthday party clowns ever my assumption was they broke bad about two years ago but it might have been earlier so literally anything you have avoided because the birthday party clowns told you it was the worst thing ever just go just go give it a try watch five ten minutes um, their whole narrative was everything was terrible, so they just said everything was terrible, even if it was okay. Um, but um, I was getting kind of bummed out because, um, uh, you know, oh, uh, the other thing, this execu executioner's song, or sorry, executioner's song, I don't remember it being this good. I remember the art being good. I don't remember the story being good, but this is like really freaking good. So I kind of did it wrong. I read the Capullo uh, issues of X-Force, and now I'm reading the Brandon Sanderson issues of Uncanny. And then I guess I will read the uh, Jay Lee uh, issues of X-Factor. But even though I'm, I mean, I'm rereading it, so it's just jogging my memory. But I didn't remember the story being this good. Like, it's, it's legit. Um, but anyway, I was just thinking about creators, um, mostly in crowdfunding, but also in uh, mainstream. Uh, and um, I was just getting kind of bummed because, like, almost everybody is just a huge asshole. Like, across the board right now. They're either, like, a huge douchebag. Um, and, like, crowdfunding is not exempt. I actually would say crowdfunding has a higher percentage of just d-bags um uh the 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 mainstream has really toned it down because they're in crisis mode right now so you got like scott snyder who's just like a total wimp but he's actually he's stepping up but the other ones are like even the ones that are like solid writers they don't have a lot of personality whereas when i started Collecting comics, um, every writer was very distinct. Uh, they had their own look, their own personality, their own style of writing. Uh, Fabian Nicieza did this thing where he would tell the letter to like really go crazy. Like usually this would happen like maybe once in a comic. It happens on like every page multiple times in Fabi Fabian Nicieza comics uh, there, there it is. Stab your eyes. I'm a man. I'm my own man. Um, but, um, I mean, the funny thing is I actually started breaking down. I was breaking the douchebags into douchebag subcategory. So you got like the sanctimonious Bible thumpers. You got the, the, the snide uh, political activists from the right. You got the, obviously, you got the SJWs. Although, although, um, that Adam Hughes, I did a video on him a day or two ago, and then people are telling me, they're like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't operate his own Facebook. It's his wife that does it. He's in the hospital right now. It's like, wait, she just like, because you, people will run other people's accounts. And then if, if it's them talking, they'll put like 
dash then their own name but that wasn't there so she's just like presenting this i was like yeah that's kind of i'm not so crazy about that so now i don't know who to call the douchebag <laughs> but like obviously you got the the uh the the mean girls the portland mafia there's all the, like these different subcategories of just fucking douchebags and when i got into comics sometimes people were uh intense you know but they were fun you had todd mcfarlane with his funny voice and his perm and his like super confidence like mixed with self-deprecation peter david was basically joss whedon before joss whedon looking like um uh george costanza chris claremont wasn't really that old chris claremont was like 40 when i started reading comics in the late 80s and maybe even like late 30s but he looked like he was in his 50s and he would like wear like a safari jacket and he would like he, he he presented a very worldly and so like you had john byrne who was like again he was only around 40 at the time who was like this curmudgeon and then you had like the the cool guys from new york like howard chaykin the very acerbic uh jewish guys then you had the you know the older crew will eisner and yeah some of them could be abrasive but like, I don't know, they were just kind of fun. They were characters unto themselves. And I mean, people are characters now, but they're not fun. Like Mags is both a person and a character, not even getting to the trans aspect as is Heather Antos, but like these aren't fun persona. I mean, like the, the, the and everyone thinks they're funny now. Nobody's funny. Who is like actually funny in comics? Who's like, oh, I'm going to tickle your ribs with my knee slappers. Like, no, nobody's, people are just snide. They're just snide. They're just snide and sarcastic. But like, nobody's really fun. I, Dan Panosian. Dan Panosian is fun. Dan Panosian, he's a, he's a jokester. You know, very good artist. And he's always, sometimes people will send me tweets and they're all offended. And I was like, Dan Panosian's been doing this for like, 15 years he's got a very um subtle sense of humor um so he's referring to this he's not attacking anyone oh and everyone's like everyone's like super tough but they're also super sensitive it's like if you are so alpha how come everything wounds you um but like comics are getting better but the problem is, and there was this great line from sean gordon murphy where he said wizard made comic book pros look cool and how oh, I'm screwing this one up. It was something like Wizard make, made us look cool and Twitter showed us as what we are. Like insecure, bitter. Um, and it's like, it, it's, it's not funny. It's not fun, as Billy Crystal would say. Um, so uh, it's, um, it's kind of grim, but there's actually a lawsuit against, uh, I think it's Google because they, they bought this character AI. So Google paid $2.7 billion to bring back an AI genius who quit in uh, frustration. Okay, so Jewish people. Um, I have to say, I'm a little cynical about your <sighs> coverings because I find them very convenient. Like, uh, the men, they have to wear this little cap, but it goes, like, right where a bald spot would be. Like, it feels very convenient. It doesn't go, like, on the very, like, front like it goes like, oh, by coincidence, it's going to cover up the bald spot. And then you got the, what is that? The one sect of Jewish people where they're like, we cover our hair with wigs of hair that look nicer than our actual hair. It's like, it just feels like you just want an excuse to buy really expensive wigs. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, but um, so character AI, uh, Google... Um, you know, paid billions, and unfortunately, they're in a lawsuit. This kid basically fell in love with one of these characters and then killed himself. Um, but um, that's a very round head <laughs> in that in that shadow, in that umbra or penumbra, whatever it is. But um, uh, I had an epiphany, and I was like, comic book pros are either just like uh, just complete duds. Like, no personality, like, Jim Zub types. Or they're just huge fucking assholes with really nothing in between. And 
it made me think about, you know, you got these AI characters, and I think the future of comics is to create or, you know, whatever, uh, pay for or whatever, an AI personality for yourself as a cartoonist and not be yourself. Um, because I don't know what happened to like the human race, but I don't know, like people used to be more fun and more interesting. And now I think it's because it's like, it's the commonality. Like we're all seeing the same memes, watching the same streaming shows. And then obviously there's the threat of being canceled, which still exists. So there's this, just this kind of flattening where like everyone, like people are either huge assholes or they're just blah, like people you, you just, you don't even remember their name two minutes later. But with AI, they can craft a personality because that's one of the things I'm saying. Like, uh, I don't really know much about that guy uh, who created Bloodrick, um, uh, Andrew Kroenke, something like that. I don't think comics is his occupation. I think he just does it sometimes. But he did like this comic at the beginning of the first issue, basically explaining how tough this was and the obstacles he went through. And it was nice, but it's like, it kind of felt like he had like the generic, like just nice guy, blah, bland person. Like you want a Stan Lee, you know, uh, you want these kind of bombastic guys or just kind of like fun and quirky and interesting. And it feels like that's kind of gone. Um, it's either just like complete duds or huge fucking assholes. So I'm thinking and this is this isn't just for people who are like just starting their career. This could be like a second or third career. Especially if you're just some asshole who's just scorched earth everywhere. Well, in 5 to 10 years, you're going to be able to write some prompts to get the art and then you also create an AI persona of the you can say anything. You can say it's a writer, you can say it's the writer artist. You can make up some sort of you know, Stan Lee type of character who's in charge of the whole studio. And you just find the personality that people like the most, which probably isn't yours. And then you just go with it. Um, and I think, I think that's, I mean, I'm already hearing about where it's like um, people are using like AI versions of themselves for their LinkedIn profile picture. But I'm pretty sure there's some people who are really slick at AI who are doing like Zoom calls and it's not them. It's, I mean, this guy like this, really advanced in AI. Like he's creating a persona. I was like, oh, you know, go do this Zoom call and then tell me what it has. And then they've, they've, they've analyzed the type of things you say. Um, because a lot of, you know, business Zoom calls, it's just kind of like catching up and then like, hey, you go do this, you go this. So then the AI comes back from the one hour Zoom meeting and says, oh, we talked about this and this person's going skiing and they want you to do this by this time. And here's the information. Here's the people to talk to. But I really think and because I've seen this complaint a lot of times, especially when crowdfunding was, you know, ascending uh, and people were saying, like, I, I'm just not that like Stan Lee type of guy. Like, I'm not really electrifying. I was like, yeah, you're fucking boring as shit but what if what if you could have an ai persona that was engaging and fun and didn't piss people off and uh uh was just uh charismatic um and funny but not annoying or snide or talking about your politics i mean uh they talk about you know people having ai girlfriends what about having, you know, an AI, oh, this is my uh, Stan Lee, my AI Stan Lee, and I love his books. And then we don't have to deal with like these, these assholes or duds, which is kind of what like comics is broken down into. Like there's literally like a handful of people I could describe as like, these are actually cool and they're interesting. And they're like, sometimes I'm just like, it's just, I'll just, I'll, I'll literally just say to myself, like, is anybody cool? Like, is, is there a single account I can go to 
where it's not like a snide asshole with like a million beefs with people and like pushing his politics or his religion or calling people Nazis or his wife is calling people Nazis on his account while he's in hospital. What the hell? Um, so, um, yeah, that's my idea. That people with bad or boring personalities, which is kind of everybody right now, um, uh, craft themselves an AI persona that you present and then people just interact with that. They have good feelings. They don't get angry. Oh, that guy said, oh, that guy's friends with this person. I don't like him. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's it. I'm not selling anything, so it's uh, I forget how to end the video. Um, that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.